be about therapy, but this is about to be a nice little getaway. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? This is the retreat I was telling you about. I can teach you a few things. Oh, hell yeah. You are all very blessed to be having your therapy sessions conducted here by Dr. Williams. I am Dr. John Williams. Welcome to the Playhouse. You're going to experience some things over the next couple of days that are gonna be mind-boggling. But you will never leave the same. What's so special about the playroom? Some say it's haunted. This is it's weird, but this presence. What kind of doctor are you? This is a healing session, and you're gonna leave this place free. Welcome to the virtual press conference for John Wynn's Playhouse. Um, we're very excited to be chatting with some of the main characters of the film, um, some of the crew members who had a played a major role in the film, such as the director, the writer, and the film editor. So, Mr. Vincent M. Ward, you play the role of Derek, who is a ladies' man, but he appears to be full of life but internally he's struggling with past experiences. Tell us a little bit about how you found your way to tap in with this character. Well, honestly, it really wasn't that hard. Um, my first time on TV was for being a ladies man on a show called the Jenny Jones Show back in the early 90s. So um, growing up, being kind of popular as far as basketball and dancing in my rap group, the ladies were there. <laughs> Even though I'm married now, but you know, the ladies were there and you know, just thought about that and you know how to turn it on and turn it off. So yeah, I've had the experience with that. That's not on no ego or a conceited tip. That's just on some, some real life that's how my life used to be. Wow. My sister um, accused me of you being my alter ego in the film. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your sister might know something we don't know. Don't be talking too much now, Bishop. <laughs> <Shelby. laughs> talking too much. <laughs> I told Bishop the other day that my mom felt like me and him could be brothers. She actually sent a picture to me. It's like, is this, is this the Bishop you be doing the movies with? I was like, no. Then I sent her a picture of Bishop, and actually, um, Ernest was in the, in, the, in the picture too, from the Waldens. So, but yeah, that's how I came. Wow. <laughs> very, very interesting. Now, my next question is for Mr. Thomas. We first of all honor you for your work and your commitment to the industry and to your craft. Um, you've been in front of the camera for many, many years, so I imagine that you've seen it all. What were your thoughts about this film when you first read the script? Oh my God, you know, uh, first of all, just thanking Bishop for the Wind Network and for being a force with, in, in this industry, in the, in, the, in the motion picture industry, TV industry, because this is the biggest ministry of all, once you can reach people through film and stories. So uh, I love the fact, because Mirror Mirror did that, and what he's doing with this one, because what is destroying the family, you know, is these, you know, what he talks about in the film, not to give it away, but that's what we need to deal with, you know, and uh, it can be horrific, the things that people, you know, the, the, the stories we have, the things we don't tell, those, you know. Uh, so I, I love the fact in seeing people suffer, you know, that I know of, of families, children, men, women, you know, uh, uh, and they're gonna benefit. I'm telling you, this film is gonna make people talk. I think it's gonna really in, uh, 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 heal, you know, parts of the human being, the individual, uh, and and the and the and the and couples and the marriage, the family, the neighborhood, everything. You know, so that's why I love again. And his, you know, with all due respect, and I've said this before. 
with a lot of the faith-based films. God bless them, God bless them, but they are boring, baby. You make you want to put your face in some, some broken glass and rub it all day. <laughs> so I, I, I'm so glad that he makes it interesting. He seduces us, he hypnotizes us, he engages us. You want to, you know, you want to keep watching, you know? But when you get to, oh, here we go, yeah, you're going to get healed and hallelujah, all right. You know, we need more than that. We need, so he is a great storyteller. And so that, you know, again, you know, it takes me a while to answer the question. You know, you know, I'm a motor mouth, but that's what I wanted to say. He, he's a great storyteller. And he is, he walks the walk. He is what he says, you know. So wow. I'm honored that he chose me. And Vincent, introduced me to Bishop. So I, I thank them both. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, working with an all-star cast, in my opinion, um, of talented actors is probably the easiest part of the job. Um, but to our director, Mr. Ruben Johnson, in your opinion, what is the most important quality to have as an effective film director? Patience is number one, because you're dealing with a lot of different personalities. So, I, I, you know, I think I'm a good people person and I can adapt to different personalities. So I think that's what helps me a lot when it comes to giving direction. So patience is number one, it's top priority for me. Wow, fabulous. Um, Dr. Wynn, you are the man with the master plan, the writer and producer of the film, you've brought all of us together and we thank you for that. Um, but the stories that you share in Playhouse are not only compelling, but heart-wrenching. How did you come up with the storyline for each particular character? Well, in, in, in our profession, I, I do want to give definite respect. Thank you for this platform and to Ruben and Vince and Kervin and Mr. Thomas, and you all have been there for me a long time and working with us. I, I think when you when you come with stories, any real movie producer, movie writer, author, he if he's not connected to the story or has not been uh, affected by it, either from counseling sessions or uh, indirectly uh, affected by it or affected by it personally. And I think that's how I do the movies. Either I've been in, in, it hasn't been directly towards me, but I've been around it. I heard the stories or it has affected me and it hurt me and I put it in. So I think these stories that we did, as far as this story, we are using stories that I've been, I've been privy to be around and to hear and to help counsel or to help uh, navigate people's emotional uh, difficulty. And if, even in my book, Wrestling With God, uh, when you read that with the little G, to deal with the consciousness. I took some elements out of the book uh, for the counseling session to bring type of life to people. And I think when people are going through uh, different disturbances like I have in my life, my whole life journey, uh, you have to find a ways and a means mentally to navigate uh, your own personal life and how to look at your life from a more positive uh, level when things have been tough. And I think that's where I get my story writing from, things that have affected me or or I have been affected by. And we know that the book is very loosely based on your book, Wrestling With God, as you mentioned, or at least some of the tools and the lessons that you've provided. Can you share with us a little bit about um, the book and how you have expressed your life story and your journey through it? I think what, with the Playhouse, you know, which deals with, you know, uh, people have been affected by their childhood. That's why we call it the Playhouse, because it's something that all of us have been affected by in our childhood that causes us to do what we do, good, bad, or indifferent. And I, and I, I put a CD together called Perspective. So it's Perspective is based on that concept. My book, Wrestling With God is the Liturgy, the Consciousness. Because you're, you're wondering, is God tormenting you or is he torturing you? Because, you know, and, and my book actually is real time. I mean, I'm going to those through those things actually in each chapter, the way I'm laying it out. You know, the my, I'm starting a church, the hotel gets bankrupt, 
I, I don't have a place to take my church. The next month after we lose the church, my baby sister that was coming to work with me, she dies and she was getting married that same year at 19 years old, she passed away. Then, then just a, a array of things. And so what I had to realize, I first wrote it and I just, I just put everything that I felt on in this book and I put it on the shelf for like three years. Then when I was in a better place, I went back through the book and the stuff I use in my program called uh, uh, Dr. John Wynn and Associates, um, uh, different mentoring programs. We went back through it, I went back through it and I put tips on how to survive these different elements in life. And I think that's what I tried to do with, with the Playhouse is that they were experiencing things, things, but Dr. Williams is there to kind of give them guidance and show them this is what you need to do to navigate through that, and which is a therapy session. And I think that's what happened to me ultimately. That's incredible. Now, you just mentioned Dr. Williams and we want to shift over to um, Kervin Smith, who is playing the role of Dr. Williams. Mr. Smith, I would love for you to share with us some of the tools that you used to tap into this character and come to this place where you're counseling all of these individuals from a very unique point of view. First of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity to be in the film. It was a phenomenal and it's a good cast. Always work. It's always good to work with uh, Vincent Ward, Mr. Thomas. The other people were brand new. It was different from Mira Mira. Um, when I first looked at the, the script, uh, I kind of, each character, you know, I, I, without giving the movie away, I started identifying with some of the things and I said, uh, he just doesn't need to be a regular counselor. He needs to be a little eccentric, a little, you know, um, out there. So, you know, we kind of just, uh, dug introspectively and began to really say, how could we make this this guy stand out? I'm, you know, as more and the more I'm hanging around these great actors, the more I say to myself, you've got to try to do something memorable. You know, there's some phenomenal memorable scenes. I don't want to, I was just looking at it again and I was looking at a scene with uh, Vince, it was phenomenal, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, so I just kind of looked introspectively and just wanted to make it eccentric, make it a little different and, and without giving too much away, making it the kind of person that they would say, we remember, you know, the character. That's pretty much where I am. Yeah. Yes. And the character definitely is memorable. Um, for those of us who have seen it, I know we walk around quoting bits and pieces of things that you've brought across on, on screen. So thank you for that. Uh, but we know that with all of the acting, with the directing, with the storyline, all of it coming together is the most essential part. And we have the editor of the film with us, Miss Angel Wynn, who is, I believe, one of the youngest African-American females in yes. the game. Uh, very talented and amazing at what she does. She's not only an editor, she's also a photographer, uh, a, a cinematographer, she, she does it all. But Angel, the next question is for you. I would love to know what is it like being an African-American female in a male dominated industry in your experience? Um, it's actually very interesting. Um, a lot of funny stories, if I could be honest, <laughs> would come from it. Um, but I've been blessed to be a part of uh, uh, productions with men that have respect for women as well as um, uh, kind of let you portray your vision as well. Um, being the assistant director on, on um, this film and as well as um, being able to have constant communication, going back and forth editing um, this film, you just see that it's different. I've heard so many stories from other uh, young ladies, um, kind of like horrible stories that they've experienced in the industry, but I've been really blessed to be able to work with uh, um, Mr. Ruben Johnson and Lenny and, and Mitch and, and um, Diego, just, just good people that have been in the industry for so long and they kind of teach me as I go as well. Well, you have a bodyguard too, me. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. 
That is very true. Awesome. Well, ladies, get your you get yourself a bodyguard. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and open this up for um, the press. Those of you who have joined us today, we want to thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to call you out and um, request that you start your camera. I'm going to start with um, Lakeisha Mosley um, because I know that she's down in Texas, but she's fortunate to have been able to hop on here with us for a few minutes. So we're going to start with um, Lakeisha. And from there, I'll just ask you to start your camera and unmute yourself, and then you'll be able to ask your question. So here we go, Miss Lakeisha. And be, again, state your name and your outlet, and then who your question is for. Okay. Hi, everyone. I hope my camera is starting. I am actually in Houston where everything wow. is going on. And so I'm just grateful to jump on. So I apologize if my camera doesn't show up for y'all, although I started it. Um, but I'm fortunate to be here. I actually have a blog called LakeishaMosley.com. Um, and I'm just uh, really glad to be here. First, I wanted to ask... Um, uh, Dr. Wynn, really what was the inspiration behind the whole thing? Mirror Mirror was off the chain, like amazing, great lineup of actors, huge fans of Mr. Ernest Thomas and Mr. Vincent Ward. So what was this, this one, like what was the whole premise behind it? <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, that, that, that premise behind that is just being in ministry for over, uh, you know, thir uh, 30 plus years and being a part of different ideologies that you're around and feelings and, and emotions and things that you go through trying to make it to the top. And uh, what happens is what I wanted to bring out in that film that, okay, be your truth. Don't, don't, don't be something you're not, be your truth. So whether you are, and that's what, the ultimate story is about when it comes to the lead pastor is he follows his truth. He's he's there because of his wife and, and her father, but he's not there because he felt led or called. So I wanted to portray, you know, everybody to find their truth. And every some people don't change. And then some people do change. And then some people just find the right path to go on. So in all my movies, you'll find that. Everybody's not gonna find Jesus, but everybody will come to a point in their life where they want to just do the right things. So I try to I try to deal with real life when I think of movies and that's how I approach it. And that's how Mirror Mirror was. Mirror Mirror was a bigger, much bigger film in terms of actors, in terms of production uh wise and sets and locations we did. But uh, that 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 mindset was that was something that took 10 years. I wrote it 10 years ago and it was just a lot out of a lot of frustration, <laughs> to be honest. And then I had to bring some remedy to it. So that's where that movie Mirror Mirror came. Well, thank you for that. It, it really shows in the trailer. Like, I just can't wait to see the rest of it. I am a huge fan, as I just said. Um, I really can't see the rest of it, but it's very um, fitting for this time where um, a lot of exposure of people uh, feelings or things are happening as well. And so I wanted to ask uh, my two favorites, <laughs> Mr. Vincent Ward and Mr. Ernest Thomas. For you, when you go into these roles, you know, what is really the prep? I know Miss Ferris asked you about like, you know, how could you portray these different guys? Like how did that fit? But really what is the kind of mind work or the mindset that goes into really playing those roles that you play. Go ahead, Ernest. <laughs> Darn it. You beat me to it. I was like, Go ahead, Vincent. <laughs> uh, well, you know, as you know, we are actors, uh, you know, from the beginning, you know, we are admired today, but in the beginning, um, and that's why they have the Actors Fund and Motion Picture Fund. Uh, you couldn't be buried in a Christian cemetery or a Jewish cemetery because we were considered possessed by the devil because we had to be these different characters. So they saw a Vincent, someone like Vincent on stage, you know, portraying a, a, a minister. The next thing, he's a he's a child molester, or he's a he's raping a woman, he, or he's a murderer, right? He's a serial 
uh, murderer. Uh, and uh, we have to, you know, and so they thought we were possessed because you believe, you know, we have to make you believe it, you know, in, in the moment. People don't realize that, yeah, we, we don't, we're not better than anyone else, but we have a specific, a very difficult task of channeling that spirit of that that person right and then trying to get rid of it being normal with your kids and your mama and 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 just everyday life going into ralph's and supermarkets and denzel for instance with uh training day took, to, took him a several weeks to exercise that character so uh it because you really want to bring authenticity and realness i mean the raw you know, the rawness to it. I mean, the, the bone marrow of that character. And it's exhausting, you know? And, but I thank God for it. It's, it's a great, you know, it's great uh, euphoria and cathartic and all that, but baby, you know, it's, it's constant. Like I have two auditions today. Vincent has one today. So films like even, even this role, you know, I'm playing a father still though. You still want to come off. You don't want to take it for granted and phone it in, you know. So you want to, oh, what particular father is this, you know, and and examine my relationship with my two sons. So I, I really ask God. And I always say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift, you know, because sometimes I'm scared. Sometimes I don't feel like I, I, I have it, you know. But when I just surrender, you know, when He takes over, you know, it just comes, you know. And you know, it's just the Holy Spirit delivering it. And uh, and then Zell, because he's a strong believer and, and, and the lover of Christ as well. It's it's just surrendering. And the people who don't believe, you know, in God, but they just surrender to the to the, to the art of it, that you have to surrender to that, to that character. So that's for me. But uh, Vincent knows best, so I don't know anything. You know, <laughs> Vincent, you know, tell me, Vincent. School me today, please. For, for me, it makes it a lot easier when you're working with somebody, with, when you're working with people that you genuinely care about and respect. And you know, they're not gonna come with the egos and all that other stuff. So it makes it a lot easier. We've all worked together a few times now. Um, I look, I look at some of the actors a little differently when they can't break out of the character. Because as an actor, you're supposed to be able to, when it says, when it says cut, you cut, you know, or, or you can stay in character for that scene. But at the end of the day, when it's time to go home, know how to turn it off. You know, some people don't know how to turn it, turn it off, you know, maybe that's my problem. I just know how to turn it off and then turn it on. But some people just stay in it the whole time or if they film in four or five months and I, I can't do that. My mind has to, I, my mind has to take a break and, and think about stuff that's, that's real to me. You know, family, you know, love, friendships, um, being able to, to um, motivate and inspire people. So for me, I just, I don't know, I just, you know, I just do what it says, you know. Bishop says, Vince, this is what I need. And I said, okay. And if it's not, then Ruben be like, no, let's do it some way. Or Andrew be like, ah, maybe you should try it this way. So, you know, I just do, I, I just do it the way that it's written. Um, you know, I never, I've never gone to acting in school. So I've never gotten that opportunity to just be able to break down a character and all that other stuff. I started off in theater and that's like my my love, that's my acting school right there. Uh, so once you hit that stage in theater, once they say action, there's no cut. Right. It's action and cut is at the end of the at the end of the play. It's just like I did a play Redemption of the Dog. And I had at the end it, you know, I was the devil. And we was actually in Houston for a whole week. So I don't know if you came to the, 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 the show and my heart goes out to you guys and blessings to everybody that's going through that in, in your city and state. So, but yeah, for me, you just, I just, you just have to know how to turn it off and turn it off. 
Thank you so much for that. And I can tell the authenticity uh, of it all. And yes, I was there, Mr. Vincent. So it was really a great play. I am a huge, huge fan. But thank you so much, Ferris, for inviting me. Uh, again, thank you all for your prayers for us as well. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for being here. Um, really quickly, though, um, Mr. Ruben Johnson has to hop off. So we want to thank him for being here and carving out this time to share yeah. with us. Um, Ruben, do you have anything that you want to say before you hop? Uh, just want to thank everybody who's who's on here. Um, want to thank the cast, the crew, everybody that's assembled. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, it's been a long time coming. Uh, I've been fortunate to know uh, Bishop Wynn for the last 13 years. I've known Vincent Ward for about 13 years or so. We've worked several times, so it makes things easier. And um, this is probably one of the best projects we've done um, since this collaboration has taken place. So that's what I have. Uh, thank you. And uh, I'll see everybody soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving right along, we're going to have Ms. Jennifer Lynn Robinson. Um, Go ahead and ask her question now. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. And I'm with the City Pulse. And I had two questions. My first one is for Bishop Wynn. And both of the questions are really around the pandemic and kind of the mental well being that we're all facing with the chaos of the last year. So, specifically for Bishop Wynn, I would love to hear about how that's impacted the people that you counsel. Um, you know, especially in light of the fact that you can't bring people together for the most part. And I know, you know, I haven't seen the film, but some of the some of the concepts seems to be people coming together and sharing their stories. So how have you been able to still maintain that community and help people with their struggles during the pandemic and the work that you do? And then just generally as a part second part to that, um, I would love to hear about how some of you have preserved or maintained your mental well being during the pandemic and, and what you think has helped you through this time? Uh, you know, that's that's a good question. The, the great thing is, is with, with our network, the WIN network, uh, we've had pastors that had did, wasn't able to meet with their members or have church. And because we, 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 we started a streaming service as well as a, a video on demand, so we were able, in fact, there's one of the organizations is considered would like to have about 6 million people and it's called the Church of God in Christ. They they live off of conventions. Their whole platform is conventions. And they didn't know what they were gonna do. And they canceled their, their main convention in November. And uh, the, 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 one of the assistant leaders who's my mentor uh, said, when I need help, can you help us? And we were able to do a 12 hour prayer on our platform, as well as inspirational teaching and talking and brought songs and music for 12 hours. But we broke it up of praying and, and inspiration to over, I think we looked at it, it was about over 3.6 million viewer minutes, over uh, 700,000 people uh, were able to look at it and access and over 55,000 devices. So we were able to bring pastors back and close to the location, I mean, to the congregation. We had other pastors that didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to have church because they shut the churches down in California and Nevada. And they called me, when can you help us? And we were able through the help of my son and my daughter, Angel, we were able to put uh, uh, the, the streaming service together to where they could meet with their, their, their pastors, can meet with their congregation through streaming. And then of course, everybody, was getting on Facebook and then Facebook, that's when Facebook was crashing really bad because they were in a, a, a pandemic as well. They were saying our bandwidth is overloaded and we, we've been missing and people been getting cut off. So we were able to come in and do that. And I think for the most part, I've been blessed and fortunate in this season is because like in Arizona, they, they never shut nothing down. So we've been able to really still stay, uh, you know, connected to everybody uh, in, in our area. And those that weren't, we were able to help them through our media. So that's how we did it. And we did a movie in the pandemic. 
which was great. Nobody, everybody was COVID free. We, we rented a mansion, everybody stayed in it. They got checked every day. They ate really good and we got to work them for many, many hours. <laughs> so it was, it, it, that's how we helped keep it together. Mr. Smith, would you like to answer the question? One of the first things that uh, I, I have um, found out is that the pandemic, uh, although that there have been many people that I have lost, I, I mean, I can't even count the number of people, people are still passing on. Uh, it's been a time of self-reflection because most of our lives are, we're, we're moving and meandering aimlessly uh, and in the process of that, um, we're, we're moving so much that we never just have time to deal with us. Uh, and so one of the first things that I've learned and I've talked to people about is doing self-introspective. You know, you've got to deal with you. You know, the three most important questions that you'll ever have to ask yourself in life is, who am I? Where am I going? What is my destiny? And so it is in the pandemic that you had to discover who you were you were not you know the facades and all of the things that you thought you needed the materialistic things and 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 the things that you may have gravitated to it's not relevant uh, there's a funny story i was counseling a guy talking to a guy and he was telling me that uh, his wife wanted him to go buy you know, her some christian louboutins and i said the, the red bottom shoes i said so he said, he kept asking her over and over again. He said, what do you, why do you need this? She said, I just feel like I gotta have my feeling. Like, well, his wife was an excessive shopper. And he said to her, he said, well, where are you gonna go with $1,500 shoes right now? And then once he said that to her, it kind of made her snap back and say, I really probably don't need some of the things that, you know, cause this is not a time where you, you come out you and the, the term is flossing. It's not a term where you come out, you know, uh, making a lot of noise and gregorious is really a time of humility and a time of self-respect and a time of self-inflict, uh, you know. And so in the process of many people um, that are going through depression, you've just got to find yourself, you've got to find something else that is going to uh, give you joy. I don't care if it's going outside, walking around the block two or three times, you know, I. I me personally, it's not the shopping thing. Malls give me inspiration. So just the other day, put my mask on and I went to the mall and just walked around because it kind of gives me an energy. And so once I did that, I came back. So you've got to find ways to uh, have some sort of normalcy, even in the midst of, you know, chaos and pandemonium. And so, you know, and gravitate to, to the people or the situations that give you peace not drama, move away from drama and gravitate to peace. That's my best advice. Thank you so much for that question, Jennifer. Now we're gonna move on to Mr. Steve Lou. Okay, just a general question for everybody. Uh, everybody's favorite scene or most important scene in the movie? I might give it away. <laughs> <laughs> you said it might give it away? I think it would give it away. That's my, th I mean, Bishop, you're the leader. You you say, you tell me, Bishop. Well, I think, I think the, I think my favorite scene is a lot of, uh, one of the, one of the things uh, that I like is the music. I love the way the music uh, carries this film. Uh, the scenes are so nice. And, uh, you know, I, I, love the, I think one of the most, I'll put this way, I go to the most powerful scene is with Mr. Vincent Moore. That's probably one of the most powerful scene in the movie, which is at the end. So that has to be um, one of the most powerful scenes. That is a powerful scene. Oh man. Angel, did you want to answer that? Yes, um, there are so many good scenes in this film. Um, watching, well, so because I edited the film, I got to see um, the bloopers of the, the scene and the actual coming together scene. <laughs> and some of the scenes I left some of the bloopers in, if you like, do you really pay attention? Like, so there is just one scene where um, the, the characters are siblings and as you know, they're just talking about overall um, therapy sessions and different things like that. And 
Um, it's just Vincent says lines. <laughs> he, like, he like you'll see when he comes out of character and then he goes back into character and it's the funniest thing ever. So I just love the scene where Vincent and his brother are talking. So when you see that, um, you'll kind of you'll get the gist of what. Um, but yes, the therapy sessions are very, very powerful. Yeah, the therapy sessions are 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 deep. Yeah, Bishop, you put your foot in those 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 lines on that one. So, yeah, yeah. And we just Sucks. have fun together. That's it. I mean, it's one thing to be working, but it's another thing to just be to have fun doing what you what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You never want to go to work or go to the set feeling miserable, like, oh, I got to deal with Ernest Thomas today. Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, know you want to go to the set and be like, oh, man, I can't wait to see, you know, right. her to do his thing, right. Ernest right. do his yeah. thing. So it makes, yeah. it makes a big difference. Yeah. And us all being in the house, we was, we, the NBA stole the bubble idea from us. So we were <laughs> <laughs> so you pretty much had to, you know, I mean you didn't have to get along, but I mean it was easy to get along with everybody. So just being together, man, I was that was a cool thing because I've been on some sets when you just play, I'm ready to go. Oh yeah. So just being there and having respect for each other and being able to talk and, and meet new people and be able to like some of some of the some of the actors and actresses this was like their first time and one thing one one thing that touched me is one of the actors left me a note on the last day before he left and i still have that note you never know who who you are inspiring to to, right. to try harder or be better and that note lets me know that no matter what you do or what you think it's always somebody that's watching so right. you know, by us being like, you know, Ernest, of course, been in the industry for a while. I've been doing it for a while. It's it's up to us to be professional and show people this is how it's done. Because Absolutely. you can't handle the small stuff. How you gonna expect, how can you expect God to bless you with the bigger stuff if you can't even, you know, control yourself right now. So that was important to me. I think with the young cast, I mean, I was so honored. And I mean, they were so blessed and honored to be with uh, Mr. Thomas and Vince. I mean, you guys really showed professionalism, kindness, and you didn't you didn't go Hollywood. And those were new, pretty, they were great. I mean, we, you know, we worked very hard with these at new actors to make them be believable. Because that's one thing we don't ever want is an unbelievable cast and something that looks corny. I don't have time for that. And if you're gonna work it, work it. Be real, be authentic. And they, my sister fell in love with Aubrey. She says, I, I just wanna hold her. <laughs> and uh, that, that was Tracy's friend. <laughs> and uh, she did a tremendous job. And I mean, they were, in fact, she's on a commercial now, right now, I think for Roku or something. And uh, so, I mean, uh, looking at these guys and i and i've always been a fond person and believer of 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 helping people get to the to their expectation their, their next level i'm always reaching i'm always thriving i'm always moving i do not stop it's always more it's always going better you got to keep uh developing and getting better at what you are who you are you don't just stay here you keep moving because there's always more to learn there's always more to do and to get better and that's what we kind of pushed with, with the professionals what they saw Vincent and Curvin and, and Mr. Thomas. They, they, it made them want to go back and study and do more and get better and get better. And they, and they were serious. They, and Vince put wisdom in them. Hey, look, you don't know where this film is going to be. So don't treat this film like it's a little film because you don't know where it's going to go. And I think that's, that's how I approach everything. Never look at things from a small point. Always do your best. And I heard, uh, I can't think of his name, that the guy that plays in, um, <laughs> oh God, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, he, he said the way he did Friday after next, he said he approached that role with, with everything in him. He said he did not take that role lightly, even though it was a small role and it opened up more doors for him. 
And I think it's better, as Les Brown says, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and have an opportunity and not be prepared. And that's one thing I told everybody, they need to come to set prepared. And that's what we were prepared. And originally I wasn't even supposed to play this part. I was helping him cast the part. <laughs> I, yeah. I had called up a couple of my friends for them to play the part. So, well, but you know, things happen. And you're gonna always get, you're gonna always get professionalism out of Vince and he's gonna be ready. That, that saves you money. Yeah. When people are ready, ain't forgetting their lines, they ain't writing it on their hands and their back and their legs <laughs> and their chest, but they come ready. <laughs> well, thank you so much um, for your question, Steve. We're going to move right along to Miss Nikki Lightwork. Welcome. Hey, hey guys, how y'all doing? Um, I'm the host from out of Washington, D.C. And um, I just want to say congratulations, a, a big step. And this question is for all of you guys. Um, what would you guys say would be the influence that this movie is going to have on the world? You know what, my, my, uh, I'll take it first. You know what, I was doing some research. I didn't even tell the cast this. I, I was t I was looking at the, uh, uh, re I was doing some research and and you know, most African-Americans don't go to therapy. I, I know a lot that are afraid to go to therapy. That's not something that we, we were told to pray, go sit down and shut up or go get high. So I don't know, but we weren't taught to go to therapy <laughs> sessions. And when I did some research, I found out April is is the month of of mental health mental uh, uh what is it fair some mental self mental health mental health month awareness. Awareness. awareness awareness so and i said wow that this this movie i was talking to uh, a, a woman that's coming to the premiere and she was telling me the problems that her sons are having with relationships and i said we're hitting on that same subject in this film and so I think with this film, it'll help people that have not dealt with their childhood traumas. In fact, mm. I'll be honest, to be transparent, when I was putting the story together and I was doing it, I was crying. Cause I was like, oh my God, no. And I was going over stuff in my own, in my American Counseling Association. I was going over in my own things that I had to get healed and let go. Every time I go through a movie, I go through this mental thing of becoming either purged by it, cleansed by it, and what what whatever it is that it does. And uh, and I found out a lot of times people do not understand that who, what's affecting, what is affecting you and has affected you. And that's what my book's about as well, is that you have old stuff that you haven't let go from, I could, I could go back from bad marriages, bad boyfriends, bad girlfriends, being cheated on, being mishandled, uh, being abused, uh, being being raped or whatever it is that you may be causes you to a cause and effect of how you act how your behavior is how you deal with people in your relationships if you come from a, a bad relationship with mother and father you're going to always be on on edge you're going to always be ready to fight you know you're going to if you if your dad cheated on your mother you're always going to wonder if your husband or your boyfriend is a cheater because it affects the family i've seen this and I've been a part of people's relationships. So I think this movie and my movies will always have a message. It's gonna be entertaining. I promise you that. And I'm gonna take you on a ride. And but I'm gonna bring a message out. And and the ultimate message we talk, Vince says it, uh, or Dr. Williams says it to Vince at the end. So I don't wanna give give it out. But the but it's <laughs> it's it's gonna it's gonna help everybody that sees it because somebody can relate to one of these characters. That's dope. That's really, really dope. Vince, why don't you say something? Ernie, you guys, she asked all of us, so we all can answer. Uh, the, you said the impact? I think what, what Bishop is saying that I know that we are, you know, mental illness with us and Latinos, uh, especially men, you know, especially men, they have a, they have a difficult time, they're denial, and as we know, or I found out through Reverend Cecil mm -hmm. Murray, uh, Reverend Cecil Murray, that uh, which was really man, it was just heartbreaking that 
uh, the second leading cause of death among uh, black men in their 20s is uh, suicide. Mm. Homicide is number one, suicide is number two, and we don't talk. So black men kill themselves, no note, whatever it is, they can't talk to nobody, not mama, not not preacher, no one, you know? Mm. And it's, it's really killing us, right? Uh, and, and if they don't kill themselves, they will go in the line of fire. So they will they will disobey the cop. You know, they'll deliberately run the stop sign so the police can get them and be and do something to make him do it, right? Mm. So, uh, and then people just suffering from depression, you know? Uh, you know, people bipolar. I have, I mean, my goodness, I have, I have so many people. I just found a cousin hit that for, uh, he lived with us for 10 years and all that time, you know, we, he was trying to pursue the music and all that. Something like this will help him because all that time he was bipolar and didn't tell us, but trying to pursue the, uh, the music profession, but unhappy. Right. Right. You know, can't talk, not telling no one. He told someone we didn't, he told a band, a, a guy he had hired to, to play music for him. And that guy told me, did you know your cousin is bipolar? I said, what? You know, so it, it's it's uh, that, that the counseling part, mental illness, we still a long way. We're, and we're su and it's killing the entire family where men are so they can't express themselves so they might even beat up the they're they're uh, they're, they're uh, beating up the wife you know uh, uh, uh beating beating up the children the children or something and then the kids then children are dealing with it you know we adopted my niece adopted a kid recently and uh the kid was acting out like an animal at one time you know I mean, literally, I had never seen it like she was possessed by the devil, right? And then we prayed. I put it on prayer lists and prayers. So I mean, Jesus is real, baby. And we prayed, and it changed like night and day, like night and day, you know. Uh, and but we also have her in therapy. She even at five years old, you know, she talks to someone, you know, because uh, that's their specialty, you know. So uh, I think it, 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 it is vital. This film is so important for every, for the entire world. And not just for a lot of, you know, majority, white folks too. Yeah, they do it more, but the majority of them don't do it. They don't seek therapy either, you know? It, everybody needs to see this film, you know? And the thing about it, it's entertaining, you know? It's, it's, it's easy on the eye, you know? All that is what we, that's why. This film is so important. It is vital to you for your life. It will save lives, it will save your mental state of mind, your happiness, your joy, all that, you know? All that we need right now. What they said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I remember growing up back in Ohio and I, I don't know anybody who went to therapy. If anything, it was always brushed off as uh, he's just being bad. Or, yeah. you know, you never heard of bipolar or anything like that. It was just like, you know, like I said, go go somewhere and sit down. Yeah, yeah. Never know what people are going through. Never know until you take the time to really ask. But you can ask all you want, but they have to be open to tell you how they feel. You know, it's just like when people take their own lives without leaving a note or anything. You just sit there and be like, okay, was, was, was it something that I could have done? Or, you know, was it something that I did? Or, you know, you, you just start wandering. And with this pandemic, the, sitting in the house all day, the devil would play, that's the devil's playground. He can get in your mind and have you start doubting yourself or your wife or your husband or your kids. You know, this, I feel like even with the whole George Floyd thing, even though I hate this pandemic, but it also made people sit down and see exactly what's going on in this world when people was like, oh, that's not happening. They're not, police, they're not doing that. 
when you sit down and you see George Floyd every day, 24 seven, and you see the Arby boy getting killed, this pandemic, it has some good to it. And I would say that's what it, that's the good thing about it because it made people realize that this stuff is really happening. This racism, this mental abuse, all this is really and truly happening in the world. And you have no choice but to sit there because you can't go outside, you can't go, you can't go to work, you can't do this, but you can turn that TV on or turn on that social media and you see that this stuff is real. So, I mean, even with the guys who killed Aubrey, you had to be kind of mentally messed up to think that I'm gonna kill this boy because he's running in the neighborhood. So that cut falls back to something to maybe how you grew up or what you've seen in your life or in your family. So the mental illness is real and people need to see this, this movie and hear, because you might can relate to one of, one of the characters. You know, these playboys out here could probably relate to my character, you know, a lot. So, you know, definitely people need to see this and and hopefully through entertainment, it can help somebody. I remember I remember doing a play and I was crazy in this play. I was a wife beater. And I remember after the play, this guy and his wife walked up to me and the guy just started crying. And I'm re looking at him like, you know, what's wrong with you? He said, I just want to thank you because I was you this morning with my wife. Wow. And that he had been beating her earlier that day. <laughs> so through oh. entertainment, and it, you know, he he promised me that day, he said, he promised me and he promised her, I would never put my hands on you ever again. So through entertainment, it can be a form of therapy for people. So that's my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, um, what the number one thing I've really gotten from the movie is um, that um, we as a people always have a lot of secrets, a lot of family secrets, a lot of things that are hidden. You know, Uncle Leroy who molested, they know he's a child molester and they kept it quiet and a lot of sick things were buried under the carpet. But uh, this is a movie that says you somewhere you may try to run you may try to walk, you may try to hide, but eventually you're gonna to have to deal with you. And that's kind of what this movie does. And I think that particularly many of the characters, Vince's character, I mean, just all across the board, people are gonna see themselves and say, wow, you know, I've been trying to run, I've been trying to hide, but that's me. That's the reason why I behave that way. That's the reason why. And because of that, hopefully it'll have some people say, I gotta go get counseling. I gotta get myself together. And that's really, so the whole premise of the movie was, um, you may be able to try to run, but you can't hide because eventually you're gonna have to look at you somewhere. And that's kind of really what we got out of the movie. It's really good, it's a phenomenal movie. You gotta see it. Yes, I would say the same. Um, and I think the beautiful part, like everyone is saying, is there are um, so many individuals in this film that have they're all going through certain things. Um, and it's not just like, if you watch a movie and it's just like two characters and they are going through a, a situation in their life that you might not be able to relate to because it's just them two. The cool thing about this film is there is like, what, there's like so many to choose from. Like, and the, the therapist, um, Dr. Williams, he really just tackles each and every one of their um, their life stories or whatever they're going through. And it's really real. All of these stories have been um, inspired by, by true events and um, real people. So it's just, it's not something that we just created or, or the writer just made up. Um, and I think even for me, uh, man, just uh, Vincent scene at the end, like, um, so I was the one just like, I was reading the script, making sure everyone was going along making sure they had their line. And when I tell you that man, he said word for word. He said word for word what was on the script, but it was weird because his back was turned because I was in the like behind the scenes. And you could feel it. Like you could feel each and every one of these 
characters because they had long monologues and they brought it out in such a crazy way that like I was like crying like it, it's it's an incredible film and I think it is going to help a lot of people and I liked the that the diversity in the race in this film and age and story and character background I think that's important as well Thank you guys. I appreciate you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing the movie and just keep changing one life at a time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nikki. Uh, we're going to move along to Sorrow from Mad Flavor TV. Such great combo going on. You actually have answered my question already. I'm Sorrow with Mad Flavor TV. So I want to piggyback on that with two ways. Firstly, stating what you're talking about with the pandemic and mental health and so forth. Ernest Thomas, you are responsible for helping to maintain my mental health during this pandemic through oh, episodes of what's happening, what is happening now, and <laughs> my newfound favorite that I didn't like when it was on, coming on TV, but now when it, now I love it. Everybody hates Chris. Ernest yes. I'm my life every day with you, so thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, beautiful. Thank, thank you, me. baby. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I just want to piggyback off, like I said, you already answered my question. So I identify with what you're saying. Um, of course, in our community, like you said, it's it's a, it's a taboo. It's a stigma. I'm a mother of a 20-something-year-old son. I have 17 nephews. So what you're saying hits home because I hear this come from their mouths. So what I want to know as a man to another brother or to your son, if your son came to you and expressed the desire of ending his life, what would you say? Or how would you tell that brother you need to get therapy? Because it is taboo. They do feel like I'm not a man if I have to do this because like you said, I'm supposed to be tough. I'm not supposed to cry. So this is a sign of me being weak. How would you let this gentleman or this young man or your brother man know it's okay to get this type of material. It's it. <laughs> well, I had, um, we've had people with these type of, type of situations have come in their life. And I think the going back to, like I said, what happened? What, what, what's the cause of this? Where is this thinking coming from? I mean, is he is he lost? Is he broken? Is he you know? It, it 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 has variables, and I think when you talk to young people and young men, most times, there there there's some type of insignificance that they're missing. It's a love, lack of love, uh, lack of uh, feeling that they are significant in life, and that they don't matter. And I think when you uh, and I know for a fact when you feel like you don't matter, that's the only time that kind of thinking takes place because of the people or the places that you have went or gone either something traumatic have happened and you just feel like it's it doesn't matter what's the use of going forward with my life and and I think there's a series of things that that individual needs to do number one first needs to find out that he matters number two he needs to get some counseling or talk to a, a mentor or talk to a preacher or talk to a counselor whatever it may be and let him just be heard and he needs to be heard over whatever it is that has happened sometimes men want to be they don't want to talk because maybe something sh shameful transpired in their life that they really don't want to talk about and they're so shameful for it that it's tormenting them on the inside and and we talked about that in the movie in fact uh vince we talked about, <laughs> we have a, a situation like this in the film and uh and then they haven't forgiven themselves they haven't give, forgiven themselves for the action or they take uh, or something happened on their watch. So it can be many different scenarios that is going on mentally and psychologically in a person's head. But first you have to talk it out and see why do they not feel, why do they feel they don't matter? And I think that's, that's where I would start. And that's where we have started. Mm -hmm. I absolutely relate to that apology because I had that convo with one of my nephews and that's his thing. He says, I want to feel needed. I want to feel that somebody needs me. I want to feel like, you know, I make a difference in your life. 
and with everyone being busy or consumed with their own self during this quarantine yeah. pandemic, he's found a loss of self. So I definitely thank you. We've come to the end of the road, um, but this has been amazing. Thank you so much to um, the actors. Thank you to Dr. Wynn and Angel and even Mr. Ruben Johnson who had to hop off. Thank you to all of the press and those of you who came out to take some time and just dive into this film. Follow the film on Facebook and on Instagram. Make sure that you tag John Wynn's Playhouse whenever you're posting um, your content. Um, does anyone have any closing remarks of uh, Dr. Wynn, Vincent, Mr. Thomas, anyone? Well, thanks, uh, Fair, for this. And I think, again, we appreciate all of you all taking our questions and listening to us. And, and again, you know, being an independent filmmaker in this in this line of work, you know, uh, it's, 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 it can be challenging, but we're thankful that we have the different outlets that we have been asked to uh, possibly go on, or we have the WIND network. As I said, if we're waiting on certain things, people want me to wait, my agent does. If not, you will be able to see this worldwide on the WIND network. So if you haven't downloaded the app, the WIND network.com, that's three N's, W-Y-N-N-N-E-T-W, or however you spell network.com. And uh, you can watch it and you can see multiple films, multiple, it's free. Uh, the film will be on pay-per-view, but it will be on the platform. Uh, if things change, we'll let you know, but, and let you know where it will be seen. Thank you again, Pharaoh. And for those of you who haven't seen John Wynn's Mirror Mirror, it's available right now on Amazon Prime. Um, it kind of has the same in ending. Um, in this, and what I mean by that is there's always a sense of relief. You have entertainment, you have inspiration, and you have resolve at the end. So make sure that you go check out John Wynn's Mirror Mirror. Mirror Mirror does not resolve at the end, according to other people. So I wouldn't tell you. I'll let is, you guys it's a, decide. It's a twist. It's a twist. <laughs> it's a twist. I'll let you, you guys see. decide. But um, Dr. Wynn's writing method is very unique and inspiring. So make sure that you check that out and let me know what you all think. And if you want to do a write up on that too, let me know. because. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful film. So thanks again, guys. We're going to be closing this out now. Um, anyone else have anything to say? Yeah, I just want to I just want to thank everyone, all the press, and that since they've heard the importance of this, that they take this and act like it's their own. Really do that campaign. Be passionate about it uh, because it will benefit your life, your family, your loved ones for generations to come. So just take it, don't take it lightly, really, especially once you see the film, but even before, just you know what Bishop stands for, you know, and you say you love us, you love Vincent and I, we want you now to take this, like this is your personal thing, you know, uh, that you're doing this for, you know it's gonna benefit your life and everyone you know in the entire world. So take it with that passion, pray on it, and let God speak to you how you need to do everything exploit this to the fullest so the entire world can see it and it can be a success so we can do more films like this.